Hello friends and welcome to today's video. I'm Jeanette with Vivo Vintage Designs. If you're new here, welcome to my channel. On this channel we learn alcohol, ink, and watercolor together. I hope by the end of the video you've enjoyed it and that you consider subscribing. So now let's get started with today's painting. Hello friends. So the weather has been good. I've been able to play with my alcohol inks. I do have the dehumidifier going uh, in my studio space so that it's a little bit drier. Um, you may know that alcohol inks and humidity do not play well together. So I decided to create another flower today and I had a vision in mind but of course as usual the alcohol inks they laugh at me because they have other plans. So in the center of my photo paper, I put down a blue and a black. And then I put this little salmon color. It's very, very um, pale. It's not, very, not a very saturated color. And then I put some green around that. And what I thought is that the blue with that orangey color would blend and I would get kind of like this purpley color because I love purple and green together. However, that's not what happened. So I dropped my alcohol once I dried everything. I dropped my alcohol and I was getting the demarcation lines from the green, they weren't moving and I should have known better, but that's okay, I can fix that. So I started to blow down, blow out my favorite petals. I lay down a line of alcohol and then with the airbrush, I push it back and forth, creating those ripples, those folds in the petals. And the PSI on my compressor is set at 40. And you can see that the blue is really not doing much at this point, And that salmon color is completely disappearing. And I have demarcation lines all over my paper. Now, if I were a beginner, I would have given up on this and thought that I had ruined it but I've got quite a few years under my belt and I've learned that it's not ruined yet. So I put some more blue and black in the center of the flower. And then of course I dried it. And what I want to do now is get rid of that, those demarcation lines from the green where I dropped it onto the paper and it dried like that. It left a stain kind of, you might say. So I'm just doing, repeating the same process, putting down a line of the alcohol from the center of the paper to the edge of the paper and blowing out the petals the same way I did in the beginning. But now what's happening is I'm getting a crusty circle around the center. And I wasn't crazy about that, but I kept going. And that's what you have to do. Sometimes you're ready to give up on a painting, but if you just keep going, you'll end up with something, usually you'll end up with something that you're happy with. So you can see I'm not putting the alcohol down right in the center, but I'm laying it down or rather starting it right on that crusty little blue line. And you can see that it's dissolving the line a little bit. So some of it is disappearing. Now I'm just putting it on that crusty little line and trying to uh, dissolve it so that it flows into the petals as I push with the airbrush. And I did have a little bit of humidity issues, but it wasn't that bad. I was able to blow it right off the paper and it didn't affect the ink too badly. Not that it was even noticeable. So now I'm just continuing to blow out petals until I get something that I'm happy with. And I'm still trying to dissolve most of that crusty blue line in the center. And I'm liking the way this is looking because the blue is spreading to the center of the, or rather the, the base of the petals. And I like that. 
So I guess I was happy with it at this point and I made sure to dry it completely. And you know me, I'm getting out my Posca pens and my Micron pens and I'm going to start outlining the petals that I want to keep. Now, of course, you don't have to create a black background. I just, I'm really, really drawn to it. I think it makes the it makes the colors appear more vibrant and the flower looks so much more dramatic with a black background. But if you're happy with yours the way it is, you don't have to do this. So as I go around, I'm looking for what looks like individual petals and I'm outlining them and I'm making sure to keep a little black space in between these petals. Now I'm grabbing my Posca pens and the one that I'm using now is a, I think it's a 0.7 nib. So I'm going to start filling in the background. And as I go along, I'll tweak it here and there. I'll change things. I don't want my petals to be overlapping. I want there to be some black space or rather the black background to show in between each of the petals. So here I am filling in the last area between the petals. And you can see already how much more vibrant those colors appear with the black background. And again, I just think it makes your flowers look so much more dramatic. So <laughs> I'm blowing the paper off my desk, but I wanna make sure that the Posca pen is completely dry before I start creating my center or doing anything else. So you can see I got my trusty little shot glass, I have a micron pen, and I am shaking the hell out of that snow cap, but for some reason it doesn't want to mix well. So what I'm doing off camera, you can't really see it very well here, but I put the um, snow cap on the bottom side of my little shot glass and then I use the dryer to dry it a little bit and it becomes thicker and more opaque. So uh, that's just a little trick that I learned by accident. And um, so I'm starting to dot it and I wanna make sure that I dry in between each layer. And the look that I'm going for with this center is I want it very bright and white around the edges but in the center I want to um, make my dots a little bit smaller and a little bit further apart so almost like you can see through the center from the top of the flower I hope that makes sense so I'm going to continue adding my dots but I'm adding less in the center and more around the edges because you're looking at this flower from the top So you can see that I'm concentrating the dots around the edge of that center and putting just a few in the center of the center. <laughs> and I'm going to add multiple layers and I'm drying off camera as well. It's very important when you're creating your centers that you add multiple layers, otherwise it just looks very flat if you just have one layer of these little dots. And of course, you know I have to add a border. So I'm grabbing a Posca pen with a really thick nib and 
I'm just using the side of the paper as I press the Posca pen to the side of the paper, it creates a guide and I can usually keep the lines very straight and even, usually not all the time. And it kind of got away from me right there. So I had to make the line a little bit thicker. So that meant that I had to go around the entire sheet and thicken up those lines to make it even with the one that I messed up. If you're, if you're doing this, adding a border with the Posca pens, just take your time, do it slow. I don't use a ruler because then I get the ink on the ruler and it ends up smearing all over my painting. So now I'm just adding a few more dots here and there and this painting will be finished. I hope that you've enjoyed this and that you give it a try. Don't forget to check the description box for links to the products used and consider joining our Facebook group Vibel Vintage Design Tutorials where you can post your versions of the paintings and techniques learned on this channel. We have such a great group of members and I love seeing what you do with what you've learned here. So now I'm taking a Posca pen at this point with a really small nib. I think this is the smallest nib I have and I'm creating these little lines here and there uh, in between the dots to make it look like each one of those little dots is connected to the center of the flower. And then I'll add a few outside of the center of the flower as well. And I love the way this turned out. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.